I'll be speaking today on uh, a bit tricky, complicated topic that is actually the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal anxiety, which is an uh, HPA axis we all know. Basically, we have, importantly, uh, hypothalamic pituitary uh, thyroid axis, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, and then one we have it is hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And to define this actually is what is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis? It actually controls the reactions to stress. Apart from stress, it also regulates digestion, the immune system, the mood, the emotions, sexuality, and energy storage and expenditure. But most importantly, it actually controls the reactions which actually we do uh, when there is stress in our body. And uh, this, the signs, the HPA axis dysfunction actually is one of the most important yet unstudied uh, problems in, in most of the patients because uh, mostly, uh, most of the patients are actually right now suffering from uh, either uh, metabolic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety. So all these uh, diseases does actually di uh, disrupts the HPA axis. Basically, now what I'll be today speaking on few of the uh, untouched causes of uh, HPA dysfunction, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal dysfunction. Now, see, in a, a, a trauma, uh, the lifestyle factors are actually trauma, the depression, the anxiety, whatever we have, the abuse, the physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse. Yes, up to these are the things which actually uh, uh, possess uh, uh, does actually. Uh, uh, possess a lot of stress in our body. And most importantly, what we don't discuss is what are the other right now the, in the recent times factors which actually can disrupt the HP axis. One is noise. Hum, we actually, uh, uh, right now, we are very fond of the metro cities. And uh, one of the most important factors that various studies have been done that the noise pollution actually uh, is uh, uh, becoming the major problem uh, in HP dysfunction. And because of noise pollutions, the the, the uh, problem of anxiety, irritation, depression, all those symptoms are actually being seen in most of the patients. Other could be nicotine or attention, uh, ADHD uh, medications, caffeine, <coughs> insufficient quality sleep, and media exposure. That is most importantly. I'll be discussing on media exposure later in the slides, uh, uh, basically. Now, HPA axis dysfunction actually could cause most, most of the diseases. One of the most important is see the, the prevalence of uh, the cardiovascular disease when there is an HPA dysfunction, around 44%. Then what we, we can see then the next uh, most prevalent disease is the sex hormone imbalances, <coughs> then autoimmune disorders. Autoimmune disorders has rarely been encountered in the uh, OPD system, then IBS symptoms such as constipation, diarrhea, both irritable bowel syndrome, be it constipation or be it diarrhea, does actually hampers the HPA axis. And, and that is the reason why we always tend to say, does, do control your uh, emotions, do control your stress, whatever stress you are, do control, because most of the things stress does is actually the metabolic diseases. Now, what HP axis does, I've already told you, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis actually controls reactions to stress. Uh, yeah. Now, stress can be, in our body, stress can be defined as an acute stress or the chronic stress. Acute stress, hum sab log jail lete hain, occurs rapidly and have an obvious onset and offset. But most importantly, what is the problematic thing is actually the chronic, chronic stress, which is sustained stresses and are considered to be the most deleterious contributing factor to immune and endocrine dysfunction, altered mood, and several neurobiological and psychological diseases. Acute stress hota hai, aata hai, jata hai, uh, the hormones release hota hai, aur aadmi bhool jata hai, but most, uh, what, what is more important is the chronic stress, because most of the chronic stresses, the public do not forget. Hamari body, koi bhi chronic stress hota hai, more than six months of time, ye stress kabhi nahi bolti hai, that is most important. Another most important thing is, see, जैसे मैंने बताया कि the autonomic nervous system जो होता है short acting होता है कोई भी shock लगता है whatever shock you you actually have gain activated होता है adrenaline noradrenaline release होता है and patient actually 
does have a, an episode of anxiety or uh, a depression, but it is short-lived. It actually subsides sp spontaneously in a, in a ma span of time. But HP axis disruption or dysregulation actually is a, is a very slow process. It has, uh, it, before actually this HP axis dysfunction occurs, patient might have been suffering from either anxiety or depression, and this uh, pre-existing anxiety depression does actually hampers this HP, uh, HP axis, and it, it possesses more of uh, the uh, stress, more of the uh, anxiety, and more of the depression in the patient. Because of its, uh, 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 because of its uh, long acting, the, or we, we can say the short, uh, HP axis actually, uh, what I've told you is, uh, 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 where is the? I don't have the slide. I'm really sorry about that, where the slides on? Now, if, if, if you can say, when exposed to a physical, I, I'm really sorry about the slide, which uh, actually I, I've lost that, but, uh, but most importantly, SAM actually, autonomic neuropathy is a short uh, acting uh, uh, dysfunction and HP axis is actually the long acting dysfunction. That is m the thing we actually want to know, wanted to show you. Now, when exposed to a physical, environmental or social stressor, the HP axis is activated and prompts the fight or flight reaction. This is actually the short acting where adrenaline, not adrenaline gets released or the short acting hota hai. But when there is a continuous exposure to physical, environmental, or social stressor, then this HP axis gets disrupted more importantly, and this uh, uh, continuous exposure does actually leads to the, uh, uh, actually leads to the uh, uh, disruption of this HP axis. Now, what happens is the hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing factor, we all know, and uh, arginine vasopressin to stimulate the antipitre to produce and secrete ACTH. Now, ACTH does what? ACTH causes glucocorticoid or cortisol synthesis and release from the adrenal gland. Hamariko, what our body needs actually is cortisol to fight against the stress, trauma, to fight against the depression, to fight against the anxiety. Cortisol's main function actually is actually to increase blood glucose and modify fat and protein metabolism to fuel the fight and flight reaction. That is the reason why HPA dysfunction in diabetic patients or in metabolic patients is problematic hota hai because the most first thing what cortisol does is actually increase the blood glucose levels increases the oxidative stress, increases the inflammation, and thereby predisposes patient to uh, uh, another complications related to type 2 diabetes. Now, uh, it also modulates immune and brain function to effectively manage status. What happens is cortisol release hota hai, aapki body ko uh, 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 modulate immune system karta hai, brain function karta hai. First of all, what this does actually, it gives uh, glucose to the brain. Cortisol first thing is, is because energy chahiye hoti hai. So that is how it, uh, it, it actually manages uh, stress and the trauma. Actually, uh, what happens initially, cortisol initially causes a potent anti-inflammatory response which allows the organisms to react to stressor without being in pain. Up kya hota? What happens is whenever we are in stress, body doesn't know that whether it is a traumatic stress or because of, of, of abuse or because of depression or anxiety. But what happens is initially cortisol causes a potent anti-inflammatory response. That is the reason why if there is stress or if there is abuse, hota hai, initially we don't tend to feel that pain or fatigue, but kuch dino baad we actually feel that when this anti-inflammatory response subsides kar jata hai cortisol, ka, then we actually feel, uh, feel a, a bit of pain or fatigue. Like when you go to flight, there is a phobia of flight. When you go down from flight, ka. Ab flight se niche jate ho, to, uh, uh, kuch baad you tend to feel uh, fatigue most of the time. flights, ho, to, you don't feel that fatigue. That is because of the initial anti-inflammatory response of the cortisol. Achha, what, is, what happens, another thing is, glucocorticoids interfere with the retrieval of the traumatic memories. Uh, as cues of the threat vein, the body increases inflammation by releasing pro-inflammatory cytokines to accelerate wound immune. Body doesn't know that whether this injury is due to uh, a trauma or any other thing, but what body sees is actually the threat. As, as the cues of the threat, when our body says threat, chala jaz, we actually, when we relax a bit, then body thinks that, okay, the threat has uh, uh, subsided. Now what happens is body increases the inflammation by re releasing pro-inflammatory cytokines to accelerate wound healing and this and at this point body is actually at a very risky phase 
when a patient actually is suffering from either type 2 diabetes or either uh, metabolic diseases or obesity or uh, uh, diseases which actually hampers the immune system. Now, what is uh, the response of an individual to stress depends not only on stressor characteristics but also on factors specific to the individual. What we see actually is uh, stress response individual ko hota hai, but how do we see that response actually matters a lot. One could be proximity to safe zones, similarity to the victim, degree of helplessness, post uh, prior traumatic experiences, all these things. Hum, I actually take uh, the trauma in a different way and you might take that trauma in a different way. So that is the reason why stress response are totally different in different peoples and that is the reason why the levels of anxiety and levels of depression are actually different in different peoples. And compared to positive events, negative events or stress causes greater awareness and recall of event details leading to stronger encoding of negative or stressful events. Because of the stress response, because of the uh, cortisol response, we actually tend to uh, memorize negative events rather than the positive events more often. Mostly five times negative uh, memories we actually keep in our, in our mind as compared to the positive events because of the stress response. What is emotional balance? I have already told you. It is actually the recapitulation. It is actually, what is emotional balance? It is the never model of emotional balance. It is actually negative emotional balance in answer recapitulation. As it's that the greater the number of stimuli related to the unpleasant event that are remembered, the greater the likelihood that the person will encounter reminders of the event leading to increased, capital, uh, increased capitalization. That is the reason why we always say, do not actually uh, try to... Uh, repeat those incidents in, in, in those patients who actually have suffered uh, uh, the kind of trauma or any abuse or anything because of this emotional balance. Because patients tend to remember those uh, uh, <clears throat> events more often and, and gets traumatized more and, and that is how the, uh, the, the dysfunction or, or the HP axis dysfunction actually uh, aggressivize and the patient actually uh, is susceptible for greater mortality disease. Now what happens is recapitulation in initially leads to repeated HP axis activation. Now what happens is HP, HP axis activation I have told that cortisol release hota hai, but over the time the continued stress prolongs the inflammatory response via continued activation of HP axis leading to glucocorticoid resistance. Now you have trauma ho hai, bar -bar chronic trauma ho hai. what happens is initially to cortisol release hota hai, but persistent trauma ki se what happens is there occurs a glucocorticoid resistance. And because of this glucocorticoid resistance, we actually suffer from low cortisol levels. And we all know low cortisol levels at the time of exposure to psychological trauma may predict the development of post-traumatic stress disorders. Up, initially, patient was having a higher level of cortisol, but due to the repeated uh, 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 traumatic conditions or situations, there occurs a glucocorticoid resistance and lower levels of cortisol. That is also no, could also be termed as hypocortisolism. Now, sustained HP, HP axis activation causes persistently high levels of CRH, which eventually causes a blunting of HCG response to CRH stimulation, that is chronic corticotropin releasing hormone stimulation. Now, what happens is exposure to additional stressor produces stronger trauma-related symptoms in part due to the exaggerated HP axis response, causing the stressor to have a stronger negative emotional balance. Exaggerated elevation of cortisol during exposure to acute stresses increases the sensitivity of NDM, NMDA receptors, which makes the brain generally more vulnerable to excitotoxic effects of stress. A, a few uh, quick physiological changes due to hypocortisolism, the volume of hippocampus, which controls not only the HP axis and stress responses, but also declarative memory, is reduced due to excitotoxic environment. Amygdala activity. Amygdala is basically what is it is a, it, it is a fear uh, uh, thing, fear hormone. Amygdala kya karta? Aapko fear uh, excite karta. So amygdala activity increases because of hypocortisolism, because of chronic persistent uh, HP axis dysfunction, dysfunction, chronic persistent uh, uh, trauma, uh, traumatic situations. Now amygdala activity increase hone karan, what happens is reduce prefrontal cortex volume impairs. Prefrontal cortex does what? It actually calms you down. Amygdala fear badata hai, to prefrontal cortex aapko calm down karta hai. To hypocortisol, persistent chronic hypocortisolisms does actually reduces the prefrontal cortex. That is the reason why 
uh, a patient who is actually suffering from anxiety or depression, uh, depression, chronic depression, chronic anxiety is actually recovers very hardly because of reduced prefrontal cortex. Now, reduced anterior uh, cingulate volume impairs the extinction of fear responses. And most importantly, thyroid hormones becomes imbalanced leading to the abnormal T3-4 ratio and increases in anxiety. We all know uh, thyroid hormones actually does also has some uh, uh, important functions in maintaining the uh, mood also uh, along with the HPA axis. Now what happens again, now then what happens in neurochemical factors, in, uh, there is a disruption, GABA activity is decreased and glutamate activity is increased. In the same way, GABA is an inhibitory hormone, GABA kya karta hai? Aapke, uh, uh, actually is, GABA is a relaxing thing and glutamate is actually excitatory. So in the same way, GABA activity decreases and glutamate activity increases. And GABA actually has profound anxiolytic effects in part by inhibiting the CRH any circuits. And actually, we need to reduce excitotoxicity in order to reduce distress, improve stress tolerance, and enable the acquisition of new skills. Then increases dopamine and norepinephrine level. Uh, uh, we all know what is actually dopamine and norepinephrine. And because of increased dopamine and norepinephrine levels, there is an increased arousal, startle, startle response, fear memory encoding, and increased HPX activation in response to recapitulation. Bar bar, uh, uh, we also, we actually what happens is uh, uh, the repeated, uh, uh, the, trauma, the repeated traumatic conditions, the situations, uh, whenever a patient actually faces, uh, this uh, happens what recapitulation hota and uh, this recapitulation actually disrupts HPA axis and this HPA axis disruption causes increase in dopamine norepinephrine and dopamine norepinephrine is actually in flight and fear uh, hormone uh, and because of increased level of dopamine and norepinephrine there is always an, a state of arousal or startle response. Aap kisi patient ko dekho ke, agar wo, uh, 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 physically abused, uh, if, if a wife actually is physically abused, you would find that she actually most of the time is in, is in a very arousal state, startled response. Thodi si cheez mein bhi ho, dar jayegi. Aap usko thoda sa awaz de doko, she actually gets feared. And be, why? Because of the increased levels of dopamine and norepinephrine. And changes to the ratios of estrogen, testosterone and progesterone also occurs, which impacts the body's ability to modulate cortisol levels. Now what happens is, one more thing is, serotonin levels are simultaneously decreased. What happens? Dopamine norepinephrine to bar jata hai. But serotonin le level actually is decreased. What is serotonin? Serotonin is a feel-good hormone. Whenever there is a uh, 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 then serotonin is levels are increased, and it, it actually gives you a feel-good uh, thing of kind of thing. So serotonin levels are simultaneously decreased in parts of the brain, disrupting communication between the amygdala and the hippocampus, which leads to increased vigilance. There are various serotonin receptors. We, we actually don't have time to think. Now, uh, there are what, why this is happening in the recent times, there, there could be some modifiable factors, modif uh, cognitive factors, problem solving things, distress tolerance, emotion, regulation, mindfulness, vulnerability prevention, revenge, all these things are actually modifiable, which a patient has to ha handle himself. Uh, 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 you have to make that patient uh, aware about these things, uh, uh, how he can actually overcome all these things by actually making uh, himself or herself more strong. Media. See, why I'm taking, talking about media? Because according to the social signal transduction theory of depression, perception of social threat by exposure, social symbolic or imagined threats, and adversity of regulate the HP axis, modern media recasts social, culture, and political events and highlights our current vulnerabilities to terrorism and dystopia 24 hours a day. Hamara media 24 ghande negative cheese dikhata hai, and media actually has become one of the most important part in disruption, disregulation of the HP axis. Why? Because most of, uh, two, three major studies have come in the recent times where they have shown that media actually has, uh, uh, plays a major role in actually increasing the levels of anxiety and depression. And chronic HP axis activation can trigger depressed mood, anhedonia, fatigue, psychomotor retardation, and behavioral withdrawal. And persistent exposure to the negative media, hum kya karte? what we does is we actually tend to find the, the negative things uh, into the Google. Why? Because we negative things rather than the positive things. That is what I have told you, the recapitulation uh, uh, phenomena. We actually tend to memorize negative things more rather than the positive things. And media actually does this. Media actually shows you the negative part rather than the uh, positive one. And these messages are of increased concern regarding youth who actually, depending on the developmental level, may not be able to discern something that is being recast. And because we should actually keep our children away from these uh, social media things because social media has become 
uh, one of the most important hazard. And in 2016, 98% of young adults use approximately 7.6 uh, different social medias regularly. Rose, uh, ek patient kya karta hai? Facebook, Instagram, Google, all these things. Uh, and actually individuals who spent more than 120 minutes on social media per day or who visited social media sites more than nine times per day had significantly increased odds of depression. And increased time, I'll take two minutes, and increased time already is actually associated with decline in communication with families. Because of this uh, disruption, what happens in uh, young kids are actually their decline in communication with family members, reduction of the interest user social circle, reduction in sleep, and increased feelings of depression and loneliness because of this social media negative impact, which actually seriously hampers HP access. Sleep, proper sleep actually, uh, uh, according to the CDC, one in three adults does not get enough sleep, and actually sleep, sleep depression or deprivation can impair, uh, lead to hyperactivation of the HP access and circadian rhythm di disruption. And studies have actually shown that improper sleep increase the levels of uh, norepinephrine and decrease the levels of serotonin and melatonin. So basically, per day, eight hours of sleep actually is required for, a pay, uh, for any, any healthy individual to actually uh, 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 have a feel-good hormone in your body. Less than seven hours, less than six hours of sleep does, could actually hamper your HPA axis. So nutrition also, one of the most important thing. Uh, uh, and Last, what I'll do is light and snoring. Lack of access of natural light, shift work, and overnight work, which prohibits the body from receiving cues from the environment, which would regulate a 24-hour circadian rhythm. This also has impacted mostly in our young adults. And that has caused insomnia at night. And because of insomnia, there had, we had seen actually the increased level of frustration, anxiety, and depression. Daytime drowsiness causes people to use stimulants, contributing to even more HP access. We do what we do? Alcohol use, certain drugs use, where people are a awake. And 26% of adults have sleep apnea, which is associated with HP access activation. Alcohol, one of the most important things, we, act, we actually know this. Nicotine. Recent nicotine use and lower dependence is actually associated with increased activation of the HP axis. Then caffeine, nutrition, and sedentariness. So, so to summarize, some levels of activation of the HP axis is necessary for motivation and energy. And when the HP axis is activated in response to stress, it actually impacts the balance of dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, and glutamate. And T3, T4 ratio thyroid hormones. It modulates the release of inflammatory cytokines, estrogen and testosterone and impacts insulin sensitivity and the balance. And sustained activation of these bidirectional system results in brain changes, which actually alters hormones and monoamines. Thank you.